بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله جل جلاله وخير هدي هدي رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin invoking Allah رب العالمين the holy, the pure, the majestic, the supreme Asking him Jalla Jalaluhu that he guide us and that he keep us guided and bless us to be a source of guidance for all, especially during this time of crisis. We ask him Jalla Wa'ala that he grant us his mercy and that he not deprive us of his mercy, not even for a moment. So long as we were alive, even when we enter into the grave and especially when we stand before him for his mercy on the day of judgment. We ask him Jalla Jalaluhu that he forgive us. That He forgive us entirely all of our sins, our minor sins and our major sins, our private sins and our public sins. That He erase these sins from our record book completely and He erase the effects of them from our lives. We ask Him Jalla Jalaluhu that He provide for us and that He provide for us in due measures that keep us grateful to Him Subhana as well as all that he has bestowed of people and of blessings in our lives, and that he help us Jalla Jalaluhu to truly better appreciate him more and show that through devotion to him Jalla Jalalu, as well as through the people that he has given to our to given given to us in our lives that we show them that love and appreciation. We ask him Jalla Jalaluhu that he protect us. And that He protect us from all that can bring us suffering in this life. And undoubtedly this pandemic of the coronavirus. Ya Allah, we ask you, Rabbil Alameen, that you save us, our families, and all of humanity, Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you, Rabbil Alameen, that you relieve us from this pandemic, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you, as it is you alone that we believe in, and only you that we worship, Ya Allah, that you alleviate the world from this pandemic. Ya Allah, that you lift it. Ya Allah, lift it. Ya Allah, remove it. Ya Allah, remove it. Ya Allah, take it away. Take it far away. Ya Allah, take it away and don't let it come back, Ya Rabbil Alameen, or that which is worse than it. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you protect us from all that can bring us suffering in this life and especially in what there is of eternity in the next. We dare declare the testimony of faith that there is no God besides Allah, the one God, the Supreme, the creator of all existence, 
who is one without partners and that all worship is for Allah Rabbul Alameen without any partners, without any of that worship going to anything else within creation and that his final prophet and messenger, the best of them all, saved for last, Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Hashimi al-Qurashi may the best of Allah Ta'ala's blessings and goodness be upon him, upon his beautiful family, beautiful family, disciples and everyone who emulates him in everything of beliefs Worship in character. Allahumma ameen. I remind myself in you of what Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala calls our attention to when He says, O oh, you who have believed, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah and be sure and love Allah Azza wa Jalla and cherish Him as He deserves and be sure that you do not die except in full submission to Him as Muslims. O oh, humanity, Cherish your Lord who has created you from a single being, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and from Adam his wife Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam. And from the two of them, the entire human race that is scattered all throughout this beautiful earth. And be mindful of Allah in whose holy name you make requests of each other and be sure that you maintain your family ties. Certainly Allah, the mighty and the majestic, observes us from above. O oh, you who have believed, be mindful of Allah Rabbul Alameen and always say that which is good. Doing so will better ensure that your sins are forgiven and that your deeds are mended. And whoever lives life in obedience to Allah Rabbul Alameen and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those are the real winners. I remind myself and you, brothers and sisters, everyone who's listening, who's watching, that the best of guidance for us is the guidance of what Allah has given in His final revelation of the Qur'an. And that the best um, understanding and implementation and practice of the Qur'an is the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. And the worst of matters in Islam are innovations that take us away from Allah Rabbul Alameen and from his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whoever lives life in obedience to Allah Rabbul Alameen and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they die in that state, those are the best. And we pray that Allah Ta'ala bless us to be from the best. Allahumma ameen. Ahbab, during this time that certainly many of us, many of you are confused, um, you are maybe feeling sad, hurt, um, maybe perhaps even a little scared. And all of these emotions are normal and it is natural that we would be experiencing some, if not maybe even all of these different things during a time that for many of us is perhaps unprecedented. We ask that Allah Rabbul Alameen who is our creator and He knows what is best for us and He has given us guidance so that we can truly live to what is best for us. We ask Him Subhana during this time that He truly guide us to be the best of whom we can be, of who he cre whom He created us to be. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen during these times of crises, Ya Allah, that You help us learn what there is of goodness from them. And undoubtedly many of us have so far seen and have read, have experienced some of this. So this pandemic of COVID-19, uh, my beloved brothers and sisters, although it is certainly a tragedy, we can see that even within a tragedy, there is a silver lining, there is goodness if we choose to see it. Someone may say, how is that possible? The masajid are closed and life as normal and usual is, is not there. And some folks are actually even angry. Um, the last thing that we should do, ya jama'ah, is to be angry because what we are dealing with here is Qadrullah Azza wa Jal. Understand that even this pandemic is something that is within Allah's decree. It is something that He has allowed to take place, subhanah. And so if we can look to, instead of become angry and become depressed, um, look at what it is of lessons that we could possibly obtain from this. Some of them or that we have, alhamdulillah, come to better recognize what we had for, of blessings and that perhaps we just took for granted because the expectation was that it would be every day as usual. And to be very honest, the way that this 
epidemic progressed to being a pandemic, it took most of us, if not all of us, by surprise. When were we ever expecting that it would take the point of us actually having to close the masajid? Um, something that was unforeseen, and in no way is it something that anybody's rejoicing about. Um, so to think about that, to count blessings and to not take for granted what Allah has bestowed. And of these other blessings and lessons that we've learned is quality time is family. It has probably been a very long time for many people that family has been together, especially in the way that we are these days as many of us, if we are following the guidelines of what government and health agencies are giving us, of staying indoors and not unnecessarily going out and practicing social distancing, we're finding ourselves at home with our families and spending more time with our families in a way that had it been by choice, uh, it would have been life as usual, work, overtime, school, whatever the case is, friends hanging out. And in this, I think we've come to better cherish our parents, better cherish our spouses, better cherish our children, our siblings, extended family. And so it brings us back to our roots. A third thing is many of us are finding that subhanAllah, um, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, that even though we're going through this tough time, this struggle, many of us are still already in paradise. And I'll continue to say that and perhaps until truly the major signs, if they occur during our lifetime, and they're probably around the corner. But I believe that many of us are still living as though we're in paradise. Yes, we have the fear of the coronavirus. Um, we see the numbers growing as far as you know, new cases and deaths. But let's be honest with ourselves and still see that Alhamdulillah, many of us, many of us were still, relatively speaking, we're safe. Alhamdulillah, we're able to still have, Alhamdulillah, whatever you can think of, of what's appetizing to eat and to drink. And actually many of us were making remarks saying that we haven't had a, a delicious home-cooked meal like this in a while. Why? Because naturally with spouses working, with parents working, with folks not being able to give the quality time, we're finding that now being home, Alhamdulillah, a good home-cooked meal is something that um, we've come to realize once again, the, va the value and the beauty of having family at home and having this opportunity to share in these blessings. And if we go on and on, we'll come to see that Alhamdulillah, the benefits, there's more than that. Of it is that we're able to worship at home as a congregation. Many of us as men, especially where we feel the obligation to go pray our daily prayers in the masjid, we've left our women and children at home. And people are praying individually, and we're not there to know what's happening. It really puts us back in a sense of being at home and praying as a jama'ah, because even though we cannot pray in the masjid as a congregation, there's nothing that prevents us, rather the opposite. There's everything that encourages us to pray as a congregation at home with our families. And anything else of what we're able to do of worship that brings us closer to Allah Rabbul Alameen. Um, I want to share a couple of ahadith here from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to really kind of further help strengthen for us our faith and to in no way allow for anything of if there is any rancor within anybody's hearts that is making us feel that, uh, you know, we should still be praying in the masajid, that we should not be treating this, you know, pandemic the way that it is. I hope that inshallah ta'ala all of us would really come to be convinced by now and to have nothing of anger within our hearts or resentment, but rather to understand that we need to work together, we need to be supportive, and we need to inshallah ta'ala work together to get through this with the least casualties and repercussions and with the greatest success. And Allah ta'ala blesses us to do this. Allahumma ameen. So this by the way is not a Juma khutbah. Uh, we are still not holding Juma'a, many of the masajid, some of them may be holding it and they may be doing so in a very limited number of where they have 
half a dozen of folks that are in there and the rest of it is being broadcasted and those who are at home are then being requested to just pray dhuhr as they have been doing. Um, right now here at IANT, we aren't doing any of those yet. We hope that inshallah ta'ala through what is taking place of the Imam's Council that we can become a united front galvanized in a way that we take on the leadership that you, the community at large of 300,000 plus Muslims in the DFW area that you are yearning for, that you deserve. And inshallah ta'ala, if you can keep us in your du'as, and that's especially what you want to do, the last thing that we ever want to do is be making du'a against anybody during this time because none of us are in any way sinning. Rather, what we are doing is all Islamically legislated and therefore, we need you to trust us and to work with us. Here are some of what is mentioned within the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, And all of these narrations of what I'm mentioning right now are in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. And they have been declared authentic by many of the Muhaddithun, including Shaykh Al-Albani rahmatullahi alayhi in the Silsilatul Sahihah and Al-Jamiu Sahih and others. This beautiful hadith is a hadith that Amr ibn al-As or Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhuma narrates saying that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا اشْتَكَ الْعَبْدُ الْمُسْلِمُ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ اُكْتُبُوا لَهُ أَفْضَلَ مَا كَانَ يَعْمَلْ Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As may Allah azza wa jal be pleased with him and his father and we're going to mention a little bit later on something about his father. He tells us that the Prophet ﷺ said that whenever one of Allah Azzawajal's slaves, servants, the Muslims, has a complaint, is suffering from something and complains to Allah Rabbul Alameen, and naturally all of us are in one sense or the other right now suffering and our complaints are going to Allah Rabbul Alameen. Allah Rabbul Alameen then proclaims to those of His angels that write down His decrees. He commands them saying, Uktubu, write down, Lahu afdala ma kana ya'mil. Write down for him, for her, their deeds based on the best of what they used to do. What does this have to do with what we're talking about? It has everything to do with what we're dealing with. Jama'a, since our normal aspect of worship of coming to the masjid on Jumu'ah and on the five daily prayers, we are not able to do so. Allah Rabbul Alameen, as He is Arhamur Rahimin, the most merciful, the most compassionate. He is Al Wadud, the most loving and the most loved. That He is the best of the best, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. He does not allow for this struggle, for this suffering of what we're going through to go unanswered. So even though, Ya Ahbab Allah, Ya Ahbab Rasulillah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, although you are not able to attend Allah's houses, understand that Allah Rabbul Alameen is rewarding you in full, based on the best of what you used to do prior to this prohibition and restriction. Let's continue. And in another narration, إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ إِذَا كَانَ عَلَى طَرِيقَةٍ حَسَنَةٍ مِّنَ الْعِبَادَةِ ثُمَّ مَرِضْ قِيلَ لِلْمَلِكِ الْمُوَكَّلِ عَلَيْهِ لِلْمَلَكِ الْمُوَكَّلِ عَلَيْهِ أو به أُكْتُبْ لَهُ مِثْلَ عَمَلِهِ إِذَا كَانَ طَلِيقًا In this other narration, the Prophet ﷺ tells us that the slave and servant, when they are in a routine of beautiful deeds and actions and worship, but then they get sick. It is said to the angel, their guardian angel that is entrusted to them, write down for them their deeds as if they were free and they did not have the restriction of illness that prevented them from continuing. So here we're having a bit more specificity in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, where we're told in the case of somebody who is ill, that naturally when you are sick, you're not able to be your best self, you're not able to maintain and do things as you used to. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu was telling us how compassionate He is and how He can, takes into consideration our circumstances. That He does not hold us and bear upon us anything greater than what's within our capacity. Rather, He tells that guardian angel, write down and record for my slave and servant their deeds. 
as they used to be prior to being sick, prior to having these restrictions. So the best of our deeds, and in this case, is giving us a specific prohibition or pardon me, a specific obstacle, and it is that of health. Does it continue there? No. Let's continue. And this is in another narration. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ma min Muslimin Yusabu bi balain fi jasadihi illa amar Allahu al hafadat al ladina yahfadunahu an iktubu li abdi fi kul yawmin wa laylatin min al khayri ma kan yamal. In this hadith, the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salam tells us that there is not a Muslim who is afflicted by some affliction in their body. And that could be with their health naturally. Except that Allah Azza wa Jal commands the guardian angels who are guarding him and protecting him by Allah's command, write down for my slave and servant each and every day, for every day and every night, whatever they are doing of good deeds. So it's not just a one-time thing while we have these restrictions, while we have these obstacles, while we're dealing with these challenges. Rather, what we are finding is that Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, as He is the most gentle, as He is the most kind, as He is the most considerate, Subhana. And then knowing these things, Ya Ahbab, it behooves us as His slaves and servants to be just the same. Part of what we need to understand about Tawheed and Allah's uniqueness and oneness, Ya Ahbab, is that yes, that is what makes Him Jalla wa'ala, the absolute, the only one, the absolute unique, such that we worship and believe in Him only. But it also means that as His slaves and servants, that we strive our best to take on those same attributes for ourselves, that we are considerate, that we are compassionate, that we are everything else of what we can be. And we need to work on it. Naturally, because none of us is going to be the best of ourselves just naturally like that. It needs to be something that we work on. Yes, Allah Rabbul Alameen may bless us to be a bit better and stronger in some things and a bit weaker in others. But that is natural and that is normal. We need to continuously work on refining ourselves so that we are a blessing anywhere and regardless of where we may be. Um, Jama'ah, when we're looking at what we're dealing with right now, and Allah alone only knows how long it's going to be. Um, I want to just mention something of what I was reading through of a book by the great Hadith scholar, Al-Hafidh Ahmed ibn Ali ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahmatullahi alayhi. And he was born in 773 Hijri, which is basically 1352 Gregorian. And he died in 852, which is 1431 Gregorian. And his book is Badal al-Ma'oon fi Fadl al-Ta'oon. A book where he writes about the different plagues and epidemics, rather pandemics, that struck throughout history, especially beginning from the time of the Prophet والسلام, up on to and through, including what we consider in Western uh, terminology to be the bubonic plague or the black plague. Um, just so that we know, uh, subhanAllah, the black plague, they say in 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 for the most part, that it was something around the time of uh, 1347 and 1351, and that's what they're giving us in, in the times of when Europe was afflicted by it. But what we're told is that it's actually something that started off from the direction, strangely enough, uh, once again of the far east of perhaps your China-Mongolia area, and it continued to spread westward up until and through the time that it reached into, uh, into Europe. Now I want to say that subhanAllah in the past, I know I've mentioned at least once that Muslims were less affected by the plagues than others and that should especially have been the case because of many things and one of them being our hygiene. But here's the thing, is that if it may have not been initiated and begun uh, within Muslim lands by Muslims, we were in no way, uh, how do I say, prone to have it if and when it entered into our lands and this was something that we certainly did come to witness and what he mentions Ibn Hajar rahmatullahi alayhi is that almost every decade subhanallah al -Azim, that there was a an epidemic of one sort or the other and he mentions how so many of them in so many of them 
giving descriptions of what happened, how many people were were were, were the, the victims of it, and how it began with you know smaller numbers. It went into the hundreds on a daily basis, and it progressed on through to thousands, thousands. Uniquely, one of the things that he does bring about through our scholarship is an observation to say that most of them began around the time of spring and then they kind of ended by summer. So whatever it is with regards to that time period of the season, that it seemed to have been a ripe breeding ground for these diseases and the festation of these diseases throughout the different peoples and lands, especially as they continued uh to travel on through into different cities and areas and regions uh, as a whole. Now we know for sure, ya ahbab, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as in many ahadith that are authentic, that he made clear that if you hear of a plague in a particular area, don't enter it. And if you are in it, don't leave it. And this was certainly a divine guidance to mitigate the effects of that epidemic so that it does not go beyond the people that are afflicted by it. So that nobody else is going into that area, meaning that they are then going to subject themselves to it, while at the same time nobody leaves that area such that they can carry it out of the area with them and further infect other people and have devastation uh, increase in a way that it has been the case. Now imagine just if that particular sunnah, that particular divine guidance was applied. How when we look back throughout history, and perhaps what I'll look to do for a future uh, presentation is take down each and every one of the plagues that Imam Ibn Hajar, rahmatullahi alayhi, states, give the dates for it and some brief description of what he mentions, and come to realize how many they were. But what I do want to maybe conclude with as the time gets closer here, is I want to mention um, a particular scenario And this was with regards to what we have of uh, Ta'un Amwas, Amwas This was a plague that took place in the lifetime of The Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim While Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was the Khalifa While he was the leader And it's referred to as Amwas Because that was the name of the village or city or area that was close to uh, Al-Maqdis, close to Jerusalem, that it seems to have been perhaps a beginning point, and from there, um, unfortunately, it spread. Unfortunately, it spread. During that time, Abu Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala anhu was the governor, and subhanallah, he, as well as his family and many others, they were the victims of this uh, epidemic. They died. And we know for sure what the Prophet ﷺ told us in a hadith are authentic, that it is a rahmah, it is a mercy for his ummah, <coughs> such that any one of the believers who dies because of it, that they are considered shuhada, that they are considered martyrs. Uh, but with that said, ya ahbab, it's not that we should be saying, hey, that's great, I want to die as a martyr, let me go ahead and smother myself in, in coronavirus so that I can be a victim. Uh, that's not how it works, Jama'ah. It's not that we should be eager looking to infect ourselves or others hoping that we can die as a shaheed. That is uh, an exploitation and an abuse of what we have of divine guidance. Uh, so let nobody think that. After Abu Ubaidah, Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was the governor. And the same thing was the command, the people stay sit where you are, as you are. People continued to go to the masjid and pray their regular prayers. They were performing the ghusl, bathing the dead from among them, praying the janazas. And every day, the quantity of people that passed away were in the hundreds, if not the thousands. Mu'adh radiallahu anhu and his family were also from those who died from that. The next person in line to become the emir was Amr ibn al-As. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. And he went ahead and he said something as he addressed the people as their leader. He said to them, basically, head for the hills, run for your lives. He told them to disperse, to not stay altogether in the way that they have been. 
basically the term of what we are hearing today of social distancing and of self-isolation. He basically told the people not to leave outside of the region, but to not have to stay within the small confines of what people were living within, of being within that same village, within that same city. Get out into nature. Go ahead into the different areas of the mountains, the hills, whatever it is, and, and, and distance yourself from one another. Now, mind you, that was a minority position at its time. So much so that others of the Sahaba, as it's narrated to us within our, our beautiful history, that of them Sharah Habil, or Shurey Habil, or Shar Habil, or however the different pronunciations of that Sahabi's name, radiallahu ta'ala anhum were, he said flat out to him in the open in front of everybody, كذبت, that you are wrong, what you are saying is wrong. Allah's Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, told us to stay put, to stay firm. But here's the thing, ya ahbab. The interpretation is so important to understand it correctly. And sometimes this is especially one of those cases to understand that there's more than one correct interpretation. And not only that there's more than one correct interpretation, but rather that there's a correct interpretation and there's perhaps, if I dare to say, an incorrect interpretation. The incorrect interpretation was one of thinking that, yeah, you continue life as usual, let people stay together, let the social you know, interactions and closeness be as they were. And in doing so, what we continue to see, generation after generation after generation, unfortunately, were that at minimum, one third of the populations were devastated. And in the best of numbers or what we're given is that half of the populations were ravaged, were the victims. So much so that some of the scholars, when they mentioned the Black Plague and the benefits of them, is that it did not leave a widow behind, nor did it leave orphans behind. Well, what does that mean? It meant that when it entered upon a family, it killed them all. It killed them all. And so this minority position of Amr ibn al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhu, is one of these cases where the majority position is the wrong position, and Allah knows best, while the minority position is certainly the correct one. I'm going to say this, Jama'ah, I'm not judging them in the past. They worked with what was available to them, of what was the best practices, and of what they had of best understanding. And in no way am I saying that our Islamic knowledge is better than theirs, no way at all. But what I am saying is that what we have of Medical and scientific advancement today, it really better helps us to confirm and affirm the position of what Amr ibn al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhu was, where he told us and he made that statement of social distancing. And alhamdulillah, we come to see that it worked. It worked. And we know that it was Amr ibn al-As that was the governor who led that army into Egypt and into North Africa that he did not die within that plague, as others who took his heed and his advice. And this is where part of what we want to understand is that obedience to leadership is so critical, especially if it is not blatantly calling to something that is kufrun bawah, that it is something of clear blasphemy. And so the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim, even though they may have voted and vocalized their dis, uh, disapproval, what they had certainly done was they still followed and obeyed, and in doing so, distancing themselves, that social distancing, we saw the effects of it in that it saved lives. Jama'a, the government is telling us that these next two weeks are super critical. And there are some uh, diagrams, there are some uh, visual aids that are out there that are showing that a single person who infects on average three people, that in the course of two weeks, that becomes um, over 30. Over 30. That if and when we're going to focus on minimizing our interactions with each other, such that it's left to being just one person, or you're minimizing it to who you have in your family, and your family's not going out there mixing, and this is where it is... Super important for our youngsters who may think that they're at less risk, and perhaps they are, to please work together and stay home. Stay home. 
because it's not just about you. It's about you being an essential link in this whole social aspect of distancing so that even though you can be totally healthy and think there's nothing with you, you can be a transmitter, a carrier, and you bring it on, you pass it on to elderly or those who may have something of allergies or chronic illness within your home or in other places. So we really need to stick close and tight together during these times and in doing so that Allah Rabbul Alameen helps see us through this and that inshallah ta'ala it will get better although we are being told uh, that it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's going to get worse before it gets better jama'ah because as the testing becomes available and more people are going to be tested and actually we're going to see more deaths through the process of this that that's going to be something where we're going to be perhaps uh, shocked by the numbers but it can still be curtailed if we follow directions and then following directions jama'ah understand that this is not just a governmental legal declaration a rule that we need to abide by but it is also an islamic one so let nobody think that you can just do what you want because understand that with allahu rabbul alameen even though you may get away with it here you do not want to stand before him jilla wa'ala and perhaps on the day of judgment you will be shown the lives of people who were afflicted by disease because of your actions of not wanting to comply or even worse Allah forbid that happened to be casualties having died because of your recklessness because of your neglect because of your rebelliousness because you chose to just want to go ahead and do what you want to and part of this even includes, and I'm stressing this as a warning to those of our brothers who think that, well, if the masajid are not holding the Jumu'ah, I'm going to hold it at my house. I'm going to hold it at my place of business. I'm going to hold it in my garage. I'm going to hold it outside in the lawn. Religion is not something for you to make up and do what you want, ya jama'ah. And sadly, this is one of the reasons why as an Imam's Council of DFW, we haven't been able to come to a a, a conclusive decision so that we can come together as a unified body and provide that guidance. But in the meantime, that surely does not give any license to people to declare themselves as imams, regardless of what titles you have of doctor or this or that or otherwise. You cannot become an overnight imam and decide that you want to give yourself these religious verdicts and hold Jumu'ah wherever you like, etc. The last thing is even for those masajid that continue to remain open for the masses. Beware, be careful, because there's already some of our brothers from among the imams who have declared that they have the coronavirus and that they were holding the Jumu'ah and the five daily prayers and they were holding public classes. And now that they're proved, uh, uh, confirmed to have corona, they're sending out communication to their congregation saying, I'm so sorry, I realized now that I have it and I'm wrong, please forgive me. Yeah, please forgive you, Allah forgive you. But the people who have been going and, and perhaps they are to blame just as much because they were zealous and thinking that, yeah, Allah is going to just save us. Allahu Rabbul Alameen has given us deen for guidance and he's also given us common sense and he's also given us, alhamdulillah, intelligence. Jama'ah, this is not a time for us to become stubborn, to be hard-headed. This is not a time for us to be wanting Allah to prove miracles to us. Allahu Rabbul Alameen makes miracles happen all the time. But we're not the ones who ask of them of Him, nor are we the ones who dictate these things. We've got to be on the same page. We need to work together. I'll conclude with this beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wherein he said, and this hadith is in Al Bukhari, An Abi Burda radiallahu anhu, Kale Semir to Aba Musa, Al Ashari radiallahu anhu, Yakulu Miraran, Kale Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Burda says that he heard that great Sahabi Abu Musa al Ashari, may Allah ta'ala be pleased with all of them, say, and he said repeatedly, time and time again, that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam declared, إِذَا مَرِضُ الْعَبْدُ أَوْ سَافَرَ كُتِبَ لَهُ مِثْلُ مَا كَانَ يَعْمَلُ مُقِيمًا صَحِيحًا He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that 
if and when the slave of Allah becomes ill or travels, that it is written and registered and recorded for them, their deeds, that is, as though they were at home a resident and healthy. Jama'a, let's understand that Allah Rabbul Alameen who has placed us in this test, He's doing so to test us to see how we're going to behave. What is our, what is our belief going to be? What are our speech and actions, our character going to be? Are we going to be of those that are going to do the right thing, say the right thing, be that team player so that we can successfully all navigate through this hard time? Or are we going to still be selfish, stubborn, and Allah forbid in doing so, even though we think that we may have the best of intentions, I'm making it clear that intentions themselves have never been good enough. They have never been the totality of everything. That is the beginning place and the starting place. But in addition to the intentions, it must be according to what we have of the best of guidance. And to be stubborn, to be selfish, has never been a teaching from Islam. We're going to conclude with some dua. So brothers and sisters, go ahead and say Ameen. Ya Allah, Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen, Ya Sami'u Ya Mujib, Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram. Ya Allah, it is you alone that we believe in and only you that we worship. Ya Allah, we call upon you through all of your beautiful names and all of your sublime attributes. Ya Allah, we ask you Rabbil Alameen to send the best of your blessings upon our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you sent as your Prophet and Messenger but even more importantly, Ya Allah, to be that most beautiful model for us to emulate. To emulate Him in His beliefs, to emulate Him in worship of you, and to emulate Him in His character. And the best of character was His character. His character with you, His character with the people, His character with Himself, and with your creation at large. Ya Allah, bless us to truly emulate Him, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, during this test during this tribulation, during this pandemic. Ya Allah, that you guide us. Ya Allah, guide us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So everything of our thoughts and everything of our speech and actions are going to be most accurate, most correct, and most pleasing to you. Ya Allah, we ask, Ya Rabbil Alameen, guide us so that everything of what we do, Ya Rabbil Alameen, is going to be safest and that it's going to be most correct. Ya Allah, we ask, Ya Rabbil Alameen, for those of your slaves and servants that are afflicted with this disease, Ya Allah, we ask you that you heal them all. Ya Allah, heal them all. Ya Allah, heal them all. Ya Allah, send upon them your healing and wellness. Ya Allah, completely heal them and remove from them this affliction, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen for those who are apparently healthy and well, Ya Allah, we ask you that you keep us all healthy and well as such. Ya Allah, we ask you that you protect the rest of humanity from this and from every other scourge that is out there. Ya Allah, we ask you, Rabbil Alameen, that you protect us. Ya Allah, protect us. Ya Allah, help us to do all that is within our capacity, Ya Allah, so that you continue to protect us. Ya Allah, we ask you, Rabbil Alameen, during this time that we see a domino effect of how it's affecting families, it's affecting job loss, it's affecting us in so many different ways. Ya Allah, we ask you, Rabbil Alameen, that you provide for those who are losing their jobs. Ya Allah, we ask you, Rabbil Alameen, that you provide for them so that they can continue to provide for themselves and for their families. Ya Allah, we ask you, Rabbil Alameen, in these times, in these hard times, Ya Allah, that you bless our hearts to continue to be generous, rather to be even more generous, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, help us to care for each other. Ya Allah, help us to be a source of, Ya Allah, a source of help for each other. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you help us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, because we know that in helping each other, you're there to help us. Ya Allah, we know that in us alleviating the suffering and hardship of anyone, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Muslim and non-Muslim, like Ya Allah, that you're there to help us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, that you help us to see the goodness and benefits of this. Ya Allah, help us to learn lessons that we take to us, with us to the grave, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, don't let this test pass and we're the same people that we are. Ya Allah, don't allow us to 
revert back to whatever we were. Ya Allah, truly help us to repent to you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, bless us to repent to you. Ya Allah, bless us to repent to you. Ya Allah, and accept from us our repentance. Ya Allah, forgive us and take our repentance. Ya Allah, forgive us and accept our repentance. Ya Allah, forgive us and accept our repentance. Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, for our brothers and sisters that have passed away. Ya Allah, and will continue to pass away due to this and any other type of disease. Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, that you accept them as martyrs. Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, that you accept them as martyrs. Ya Allah, we ask you that you accept them as martyrs. Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, for the leadership of the Muslims. Ya Allah, administrative and religious, Ya Allah, help us to come together in a way that's truly, truly going to provide the leadership that your slaves and servants, our brothers and sisters as a whole are yearning for and they deserve. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you gather our hearts and minds to be unified. Ya Allah, guide us and inspire us so that we can truly be a single united front. Ya Allah, help us so that we can be a source of goodness and help for each other and for the congregation at large and for humanity at large. Ya Allah, help us and bless us so that we can step up to what you have created us to be of the best of nations for humanity, Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you, Rabbil Alameen, that you answer these prayers and the prayers of our brothers and sisters as a whole. Allahumma Rabbana Ameen. Allahumma Rabbana Ameen. Allahumma Rabbana Ameen. Brothers and sisters, as we conclude, I ask you to please, please be considerate as you have the ability to help financially, help those that are in need. Those that you may know of, especially if they're family, those that you may know of if they're part of the community, as well as the centers themselves, know that during these times, IANT and all of the other centers, as we are closed, jama'ah, the doors are not open. So for people to donate, it has become a tremendous obstacle. Please utilize the opportunities that are there as we have a donate button here for this live stream, through the website, through any other means that are available. Please donate and know that your donations, regardless of whether they're in person or electronic, that Allah Rabbul Alameen accepts all that you do of good for Him. And we ask Him Jalla wa'ala that He accept your donations as well as your du'as and in doing so that He heals whomever from your family members is ill and that He spare whomever is healthy such that you are not afflicted by anything of a life-threatening disease. We ask Him Jalla wa'ala during these times as we are together that He truly help to heal our relationships within our families, that wherever there is divorce, that Allah Rabbul Alameen heal our hearts, wherever there is the thought of divorce, that Allah Azza wa reconcile between our hearts, wherever there is anything of bad blood between family members, that Allah Rabbul Alameen helps us to heal, that He Jalla wa'ala truly add for us the needed perspective that only these types of global epidemics and pandemics and catastrophes can do. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.